This week on Sportsman TV, trout. It's what's for breakfast. Come on, go with us. You know what, just trying to catch breakfast, honestly. It's early. Captain must get us out here real, real early in the morning, and uh, I ain't had my breakfast yet, so just trying to catch enough for breakfast. Right now, we kind of stopped on a flock of birds, and uh, lately these birds have been carrying a mixed bag, but a lot of them are actually uh, keepers, you know. Uh-oh. That sounded good. Uh-oh. Double. That'll work. You know, school trout rather than uh, the big keepers. How's that feel there, Greg? Is it Captain, you run interference. You s I'm gonna take care of this thing. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, oh, there you go. I recruited one of the best, you know. They, they may think you're just a bass fisherman, but, I, uh, you know, I think you kind of catch anything that swims. I got you back. You feel like a decent fish? So big right there. I saw that head shake. Yeah, that's, a, that's a decent fish. Yes, sir. I love that sound, that cha-cha-cha-cha of that cork. Now the birds have left, but that doesn't mean that the fish are always gonna leave. And actually what I find a lot of times is you'll, you'll end up catching more keepers once the birds actually leave. You just gotta be a little bit patient with it. And I've thought about leaving about three times already, and every time I think about leaving, we catch a keeper. I just like catching them every cast. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what a lot I mean, of times, you know, it's, 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 it really is pretty. And they're actually mixed. We catch them both white and... Uh... I usually like it at least two foot or so on my corks when I'm trout fishing. The only time I go, go less is if I'm red fishing and, uh, you know, I'm up against a bank and I only need a foot. Um, I don't use any adjustable. Down here in Dular's, we pretty much just use a fluorocarbon, usually about 15 to 20 pound test, um, you know, soft plastic and, and a cork. Something to, to think about when, you're, when you are fishing, um, especially if the water temperature drops, like it's dropped 10 degrees over two days. This is why the cork fishing a lot of time works better is it keeps the bait in the strike zone then fish are a little lethargic. Even if they're chasing bird, uh, shrimp and stuff, it doesn't mean they're necessarily gonna be uh, rock star. Like I could throw a double rig like I did yesterday and not get a bite. Fried trout filet, grits, a little brown gravy. Mm, mm, mm. Two fried eggs, over easy. The way we like to start our morning here on Sportsman TV. Turn it into a cork hand, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, they're right off the boat. I like having that strike indicator. Yeah. It works almost like having a bell. <laughs> there he is. You know what's sad is in California when I was living there, the, you fish for catfish a lot. So you, you're bank fishing, you cast out and you put a little bell right, right up here. Ding, and then ding, all of a sudden, ding, 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 you go and run over and grab your rod. Now that would happen about once a day because that's about how many fish you catch. You know, you catch one. That's why I could never go back and actually live there. Four or five times then right close to the boat. Them birds have been gone for a long time. All right, well let me ask you this question. Do we run the birds off? Or are they just I, You know, I think we do. Yeah, you know, it seems like it's always, 
you know, they stay, and then if you, you yeah, know. you get a couple casts in there, you catch their friend, you know, and they start the they, birds start going away. Yeah. Well, think about it. It's kind of like you're on fish every cast, and here comes a boat, and we go, ah, come on, man. Right. I'm sure they say the same thing about us when we pull up. But uh, there you go. There's That's another a nice one. Breakfast, baby, breakfast. You know, trying to get them double fisted uh, trout. Yeah, that's a good one. Bam! You know, a lot of people sit there and they always go, hey, you know, it's a spot. I would say half of my spots I've learned because of weather has dictated where I fish. You know, if I get a strong, like we're fishing a north bank right now, strong north wind, hey, go get protected. And that's how you, you know, and the key when you're searching for fish, you got to keep moving. So. That's how I found this. Ultimately, it was supposed to be a redfish hole, and now it's one of my better uh, trout holes. They're better fish than under than birds. Yes, they are. Nice. Now we're working on lunch. <laughs> uh oh. There he Maybe is. Maybe he'll stay hooked up. Oh, you got him, buddy. I got him. I got him. Ooh, I can just see him laying on a pile of grits. <laughs> With a little cuvion gravy poured right over his head. Oh man! I mean a nice one. Look at the girth. Almost take two hands to get around one like this. <laughs> now see, I grew up like it's a it's a funny story. All right, so I grew up every now and then on the weekend. There, we'd have fish for breakfast. Now we'd have regular breakfast. You know, we'd have potatoes and eggs and fried fish would be the, you know, would be the meat. So here this summer, I guess my. Uh, my kids spent like quite a bit of time with my parents and they and they came home, we, they fried fish for breakfast. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, like one weekend we might have some fried deer steak for breakfast or, you know, fish, that's just, there's not a bad time to eat fish. I mean, what they used to, call, when I grew up, they called little bullfrogs, small ones, as breakfast frogs. That's the kind of frog you have for breakfast. While I'm telling my story, breakfast showed up. One reason I can't throw close to you. Is <laughs> you that deal like squirrel? Squirrel? Yeah. Well, this sucker wants. To see if I can bring him over here. Come on, buddy. Uh oh. This is a good one right here. I mean, a great old big. That's a. That's a typical. There you go, hack. You got him. They're here. They're here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. He Oh, he came off. Oh, and he, he came, came back and got it, or his buddy that was chasing <laughs> him did. And then look oh, at that God. hammer. Look at that one. Bam! Oh, oh and he, he was gonna come <laughs> off right there at the end, so I had to get him in quick. <laughs> That's clutch. That's clutch. Hey man, I'm. That That's right there is enough to feed all of my kids for breakfast. Really, when you buy a soft plastic, you see that tail how it wiggles. That's really what you're looking for, especially if you're throwing it under a cork because it's, it's fluttering down and then it sits there and you want something in that tide just to kind of do one of these and whack. That's and that's that just the most effective Most way. effective way to go, you know. Uh, you know, they got, and, and I do find if you go with the real cheap brands, they're a little firmer. So just be conscious of that, that's all. He bit on the end of the cast. It was like one pop and he clocked it. Get in here. Oh. It's scary right there towards the end. It's all fun and games when they're out there away from the boat. But when you're dealing with an animal with that kind of teeth, you have to fear them when they get close. I mean, because a lot of times when I swing one in, it looks like they'll go for the jug. <laughs> you don't want to see a guy roll back into the dock and he's got a big old speckle trout stuck in his neck. Yeah, he was. <laughs> that's right, Captain. Drag him up here close so we don't have to throw his fall. Well, that's... <laughs> that's <laughs> easing him. He's just trying just cane up. pulling. Oh, oh. man. One for Peter right there, you know? At least they're not gonna be calling me about this trip. That was kind of a Guggen move right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, gotta, I see that on I, Katuna. I'm not sure what a Guggen is, but I, I started to refer to different things. It's a Guggen. Wrong. I think they, see this is a, that shallow, shallow little cove here. I think they come and kind of warm themselves up in the sun. Because I've started here many times, right at daybreak, and I usually don't catch much. 
but the sun's up, it's like 9.30 almost. It seems like when the water temperature drops, they don't have to be in as a perfect a place. And what I mean by that, you know, in the summertime when the water's super, super hot, you know, the salinity level has to be right and the uh, oxygen level has to be right. You know, and a lot of our water doesn't, is a low oxygen content. Well, this time of the year when the water cools down, there's a lot more oxygen in the water. So there's a lot more places suited for trout. Do this right here. Woo! Woo! And I'll be honest with you, I'm not an avid trout fisherman, but I am when they're biting like this. <laughs> Always a good one. Bam! <laughs> oh, I was hoping it fell off in the... I was like, that's just the way you roll. No, we got to use your, your... You notice that you got two different gloves. You want to tell us how that happened? Uh, well, the first... I bought a pair of gloves this morning in the local convenience store here close, and I noticed that they only sell two right gloves. So what I've been watching for is that guy that has two right arms, because I thought that's what the gloves were for. <laughs> so that's the reason I had to... Where I'm from, we have to have a left glove and a right glove. <laughs> and I was sold two right gloves. You must be from up the bay. Yeah, right. This lower <laughs> end, you'll see a lot of them. They all have two arms, but they're both out the same side. You know? <laughs> and one of them's a little short arm, kind of like a little, <laughs> yeah. like little extra T-Rex arm right there on the bottom. <laughs> Mint for Cajun boys. Erupted here. Ooh, I hope oh, you, head shaker. I'm waiting for this one to come flying off. Come on. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't even worry about it. See what I'm saying? People worry about them coming off. I don't even worry about it. Oh, see, that's. A, I don't see you doing those in those bass tournaments. <laughs> he might be a little short. I think he's short. Yeah, he might be. Oh, he's got his his little. Oh, oh. rat. Oh, soured the hole. Uh oh. You know, that's the one thing that I think a lot of people kind of struggle with this time of year when you get them fronts is the water clarity. And, and not enough people pay attention to the wind for more than just the day they're fishing. So if you got a wind coming out of the north for five straight days, go straight to the north banks. But I always judge it by the look of the trolling motor. If I could see the foot of the trolling motor, it doesn't matter how much I can see, but as long as I can see it, that, that's good enough water to fish in. And uh, right now it's, it's actually pretty, really clean. You're never gonna get perfectly clean water out in the lakes after fronts, but what you're trying to distinguish is how good that, that water is. You know, whether it's a, a rated a 10 is perfect and a one is zero, or one is terrible. You know, if you can find a five, you can still catch fish. I think a lot has to do with, because it's so shallow, you know, they, they can hear a lot more. We're giggling and that's a nice fish. They are all nice fish. But you know, the, honestly, when we were catching them every cast under the burden, I like that too. I'm not, <laughs> I like it all. Every fish is a good one, but when they shake like that, hallelujah. Man. Traditionally, when you're looking for bigger trout, you stay away from the birds, okay? Um, but I usually find, like these, these are nice fish for us. If you want real big trout, though you you traditionally find them by themselves and i usually find them closer to the bank i can typically tell by the girth when you reach and grab around one if your fingers just barely close up he's gonna be just right but to check that theory no problem he's got the the angle on them. Oops, look at that. See, I gotta stop looking over at Greg. I almost missed mine too. God, they're nice ones. You know, when you hear that head shake, when they come to the surface and shake their head like that, it's a guarantee it's a nice one. It, yeah. If they come skin, then yeah. maybe not, but this one. Like that. Mm. Like that. That was Just a good like example. There you go. That? Man, see, you know what? You asked me to, to show them, and, and there I did it. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm lucky. Good. <laughs> I'm thinking it's real good. This type of fishing is so fun. Another cool thing about it is anybody can do this. That's the deal right there. <laughs> yep. That's the magic. If you can watch the bobber. Now, if you brought a blind man out here, he's probably going to struggle with it. <laughs> yeah. But everybody else, not a problem. And you know, the cool thing that uh, Captain Trevor said earlier, his kids caught their first redfish on a spin cast reel. 
Well, that's a push button. Zebco 33, yeah. anybody can use that. Yep. You know, you can take someone who's never fished before. The other deal is we're not around any trees or anything, wide open fishing. Just a perfect place to, you know, to take someone that, you know, doesn't get to fish very often. Or it's good for somebody who gets to fish all the time. Oh, head shaker. Oh, head shaker. Yellow mouth. Oh, that's Ooh, a good one right nice. there. Perfect. Oh, see, I caught too many trout. But broke off your string. Well, now what size leader are you using? I'm using 20 pound, but that just shows the size of the fish we're catching today. Oh, big's breaking the line. <laughs> well, that's a pretty one right there. See, ghetto too. You only got one tooth. And it's gold. <laughs> it's gold. Platinum actually <laughs> now. It used to be gold, but now it's got to be platinum. We're only in about two foot of water, but. I mean, we just had about 10 degrees water change over the last two days. So what I found yesterday is these, these trout, once the sun comes up, they're moving up onto these mud flats, kind of getting warm because the temperature is going to be up and down. I mean, next week we're looking at 80 degrees again. So that's basically what they're doing. To, to find shallower water, you usually don't hit a cut with a lot of t a tidal movement. That's really what it comes down to. Now there is a cut, I mean, half a mile away. But what I find is you just drift these banks in any inlet that you can find that's not a technically a cut because you don't want any water coming through. That's how you're going to find these, these flats. Yeah, a little Cap further out. The trout, yeah, I got to bring you up here, buddy. Yeah, I know you got, you turned that boat, got an angle on me. Kind of front ended you. But you notice I'm versatile. Well, you got to move around, around a little bit, you know. I mean, very mobile, this one. That's uh, that's the joy of it all. Everybody's burnt out because we've literally went 600 yards across in that freaking room. In that, yeah. You... So we're setting there close. Good head shaker out here in the uh -oh. Out here in the abyss. He's out in the... They no bottom out here where we at now. No, nah, no, nah, we're deep. We're in deep, deep water. It's like two and a half feet out here. Look, they, they shrunk a little bit. That's kind of what happens the when the bends. yeah, when the tide stops. That's you tend to find your small, smaller really? fish. Yeah. Earlier we were catching nice big trout. The tide slowed down drastically, so typically I find the smaller fish bite during a during the, the, the low on tide. Why is that? I'm just guessing that you know the the bigger fish like having the food come to them, where the littler fish will kind of move around a little bit more searching. The big fish are lazy. I guess that's the best way to say it. Oh, yeah. there. Didn't miss a bite. Oh, oh, I think that's 106. This is, oh, there's 107. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> oh. Boy, it's a tough life, but somebody's got to do it. Yeah, be careful, Captain. You want me to take him off? I know you got yeah. a little bobo yeah. in there. Yeah, I got a bobo on my finger. I'm, I'm looking to see if I can now that may, that's a little, that's a white. That's a white trout. Look. That's a white trout. You need some help? You got it, Captain? You need some help? <laughs> yeah. I, I, hey, my, my left hand, sir, I, I, got, a, I got a blister, actually, which is sad. A bit. I'm cramping. I need some water in the bananas. Where are they at? Oh. Man, catches so many trout, his, arm, his oh. muscles have pulled in, he looks like a T-Rex. What's that sad is I actually have a tiny little blister right here from fishing. Oh. Yeah, there are people out there right now hearing your sobs. Yeah, like they're, they feel sorry for me. And they're like, oh, that guy, <laughs> yeah. yeah. While we're somewhere today driving nails or uh, having to deal with other yeah, people. Yeah, cleaning yeah. up porta potties or you know picking up my trash. He's got a little blister on his face. Poor, yeah. poor. I, I, hey, hack, you got you a band-aid? Down? Do you need to sit down? Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you got a band-aid? I just happen to carry a band-aid in my wallet. <laughs> Trout for breakfast, baby. A black iron pot awaits. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Join us here next time on Sportsman TV.